how to start um, looking at property and breaking it down. So the first thing I would do is I would get a few um, things open, which one would be the county assessor website. So do you know where you're going? So call, um, just Google in Pueblo County Assessor. And then I would pull up your Navita. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is pull up the, the property on the county assessor site. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at, okay, what are we dealing with? So we're dealing with a ranch style, two bedroom, one bath. Is that right, Vicki? And it has one bath? Yes. And then we're looking at square footage. So it's a total square footage of 1158. And so what I normally do is I print this and then I start writing what the square footage because you're gonna go back to it quite a bit. So then I would pull up the um, Navica listing and it, so in here in your home page might be set up different than mine because I made mine um, Customized to what I like to pull up So you guys can I don't know if you know you can do that, but if you want to customize your home page you can so, Then what I want to see is it ever been listed And it has not so this this database started in 2006 I believe 2005 2006 so the reason I do that is just like what I did with Lorraine when she had that one listing is that I want to know did it just did it sell last year has it been listed three or four times and they're going through agents because it's probably maybe a price issue at that point so I want to know all the history that I can get the only thing I care about is this house I don't care about anything else when I do that I just want a history of kind of when it sold, it might give me interior pictures. So I want to see the interior pictures of what's going on. So if you have nothing to go by, what do you do? So I'm going to show you. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. So you're going to, like literally this is going to be step by step, so you guys should be taking notes yeah, because if you don't, this, this is going to be great today and it's going to be horrible in a week. Because you're going to be like, Jamie made it look so easy. Yeah, because I do it a hundred times a year. So then you'll hit search. So this is the reason that I wrote down the square footage. So this is probably considered central in our MLS. Do you know where to find the subdivisions? Like what, what, where they're at? I'll just show you just in case. Under resources. You go to documents. And then down here is, I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> master area. Oh, okay. And what it'll do is it'll give you the addresses and then it tells you what, what area in the MLS they should be in. So if you ever get reported because you're in the wrong subdivision sub area that's why and sometimes these change so if something doesn't look quite right that's where you go okay do you so automatically go with what the assessor tells you so if it says it's in the central area you go no the assessor has nothing to do with Navica okay. so you always want so here's what I would have done is I just would have said what's 1410 in but if I didn't know, this is where you would pull it up. So you would go to master area. So it's in central sub area. And then I would start by just doing hit search and then residential. Okay, so what do you think we would do next? I just want to see where you guys are at. So go ahead, Vicki. Um, you're going to put uh, bedrooms, baths, price, or price range mm -hmm. first. So I put 
110 to 130. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Like 1300, I think you mean? Yeah. So. Oh, as far as square footage? Right. Um, you would never put a price. So in this. So I've already done that wrong then. Yes. Because what you're doing is you're saying you already know value without looking what's sold. So <laughs> never, never, that's more for a buyer, which that's good to know. And it's not to pick on anybody. I want you to know it's to learn how are you doing it? And here's why we wouldn't do it that way. Or here's why we would do it that way. So, so I'm glad you said that Vicki, because other people are probably doing it that way. And what you're doing is you're limiting your scope of what you're finding to that money, which I don't know, heck, maybe now that marketplace has gone up 25% <clears throat> from whatever you last thought it was at, because I don't know where you would get that number, just off the county assessor, is that what you're thinking? No, oh no, county assessor is way less. Okay. I, I just knew I'm actually listing this house. Okay. So I pulled comps, but obviously I'm confused. Okay. So I'm sure I haven't done it correctly. Good. and. We just discussed price point that she wants to right. get, and so that's where I started and right. ended. So this is all new agents, including myself. <laughs> when I started, I would say, where do you want to list your house at? Instead of saying, this is what your house is worth, and you'll learn over time that that's probably not a really great strategy. This Numbers don't lie, period. So they may want 400000 for it. If, this, if the numbers say three fifty, dollars it's a three fifty house. So, so what you would do is I go to 12 months. I want to see what sold in the last year. And it's going to be a ton, but I'm going to show you how I keep refining it. And this is, this is the key to market analysis. That's why I want to go step by step because a lot of people get confused or they get, they get a lot of data and then they don't know how to go through it. So it's a single family. I want, oh, this isn't the one. Yeah, I work. Um, I want to go to sold because I don't. I don't want to know anything else. I only want to know what my marketplace has been doing in the last year, and then total square footage. I'm glad this didn't have a basement because we are only working with one set of total square footage. You're not adding the basement or two stories to total. So total square footage. I'm going to range from probably 800. So that's about 300, a little over 300 less. And then I'm going to go up to, um, so we're going to round it to 12. We're going to go up to 1,500. And then we're going to go to ranch, because I don't want to compare it to anything else because it's a ranch style home. And we're going to go to the central area. And the reason why is we want to be in the same geographical area as our subject. So, so that's right now, that's all I care about. So I'm going to start my search. We're not worried about bedrooms, baths at this nope. point? Nope. Wow. So I have 90 entries, okay? So I knew that was gonna happen, but I wanted to show you that's going to happen and what to do next. So what I would do next is I would take it down, so return back, and I would take it down to nine months And we still have 67, way too many, okay? So you could see, I don't have to go to six. So we're gonna go to three because our marketplace has been so busy. We know that in the last three months, we probably have plenty of things to choose from. So here's what you guys do. You start small and you go big and you should be going big and whittling it down to specifics. Or you go big and you use I don't even know how you would do it, but out of 60 or 90 listings, you decided to use these five or whatever. So you want to make sure if you have that many, if we have enough to pull from, which we do is 34 in three months, that's what we're going to use. So then what I do is I, I adjust by list price. So I don't know if you guys know you can do that right up here. So if you hit any of these, it will adjust it. So if you hit, let's say you're pulling a lot of sub areas, and you hit sub area, it would put all the central in one, all the Liberty Point in another, whatever you have. Or you can um, 
do it by price, always normally I do it by price. So I also customized this because I want to know yeah, it listed at 20 and sold for 20. It listed at 89 and sold for 91. So that's telling me that that was a high demand house because it sold for over list price. So I kind of want to know, it, it just gives me a good view of, okay, what's really going on in the neighborhood. Sammy, do you customize that too? Because mine are like sold. Okay, so you could do that? Yes. So Sorry. now I need to know, does it have a garage? Vicki? Um, it does. It's an older garage. It's not the overhead type. It's got two doors that open. Like okay. This and is it, so it's a two car or a one car? It's a one car. Okay. So this is why I recommend you guys go look at your subject before you decide what price it's going to be. And we know, so what I would do is I would go through and I know it's a three bedroom, one bath, right? So I'm gonna go through and kind of see what three bedroom, one baths are at, and what I'm gonna do is go to the assessor because he's gonna give me a general idea of price. So I know it's gonna be over 75,000, right? Because the assessor says it's worth 75,000 and we know statistically they're low. So why would you look under anything under 75,000, right? So then what I would do now, and it's a lot of going back and forth, but this is how you fine, fine tune it because I don't want the other stuff to mess up my brain. I want to know, so right now I would go 75,000 because I know I have enough comps to pull from it. Because in a down market, the county assessor might be right on or he might be high. So when the market starts to change, that's why I like to pull them all up and then we know we're in at least a neutral market right now. So now I'm down to 32 properties. So the next thing I would do is I would say, okay, what, what has three bedrooms, one baths? Almost all of them, okay? So then I would start going, okay, what, what, what has a one car? It's probably a detached garage? Yes. Okay. So then I would start looking and seeing what has a one car detached, right? And then I would look at photographs. Sorry, I didn't mean to go in there. I was going to cheat and just go to photographs. So um, that's another thing I did wrong is I didn't do detached. I just did one car. It doesn't matter. Okay. I would start with detached just because to a buyer it's probably worth a little less in their mind. But it wouldn't matter. If you got them all, it wouldn't make a difference. So then I would start looking at what has the one car garages and almost all of them do. So, and there are three bedroom, one bath. So now I would start pulling those out. I'd start pulling a three bedroom, one bath out. This one has a basement, so I'm not gonna use it. See this? Cause it's gonna skew your numbers. I only want one level ranchers, okay? Am I going too fast? Did you put a price range in already? You said that Just said over 75000 because I know the county assessor is a little low. So, so what do you put in the second? Nothing. Oh. oh you put nothing. That's, what I That's where I was having trouble. So okay. you did a minimum of the assessor price, right. and then it narrowed it down to 30. Right. 30. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good question. So then what I would do is just start pulling three bedroom, one's baths with a garage. So you're just going to check those? Mm -hmm. So there's so many, I'm going to look for the three bedroom one baths. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did I tell you that? Yeah, we're going through these. Okay. I think you said. <laughs> so just the three bedroom, one baths. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody look. You're going to add filter. And it's going to bring everything we just clicked. So we just went from 
90 to 70 to 32 to 12. By clicking those boxes and then hitting the filter, that filters the clicks. Yes, okay. into one. And it's a great way to save listings too for your market. Well, well, I'll show you that too. So now Vicki has to guide us because she's the one who knows what the property looks like. So we have to go, so this one has a basement. So all these, I'm gonna take all these out now. I just noticed I clicked the ones that have a basement. So I'm taking those out. So now I'm down to four. <coughs> So if I narrow out all the three bedrooms, we're not going to have enough. If I take out the basement, so I'm going to include now the two bedroom, one baths. This is why I went back. So go back to your search, hit, hit search at the top because it's saving all of your information up here. And we're going to go back to our original 32, okay? So now I'm gonna look at what has basements and I don't want anything that has a basement. So I'm gonna click the first ones cause all of these don't have basements. Cause I would rather address a garage than square footage on a house cause it's easier. So that put us down to 14. Are you guys okay? So your goal is to be around 10 is what you're thinking? Uh, my goal is to be about six when we're done. Okay. Or sometimes there's three and those three are it. That's, that's if they're the most similar, then that's it. Okay. Okay, so now what I would do is I would look at, so we're ranging in price range from 99 up to 172. So the easiest thing to do is go to 172 and look at the photos. So Vicki, I need you to look. Hold on just a second, I'm way behind. Okay. And tell me if you guys are behind, because I want you to try and feel the process as you're going through, because there's a lot of back and forth. Okay. What's the minimum you should use comparable? Like three? What if you don't have two? Then I go to another area. So this is CMA 101. So there's CMA 201, 301, 401. So if you're not finding at least three, which is a minimum, then we need to go to another sub area that's similar to it. So sometimes you'll compare um, universe, um, El Camino to university because they're similar areas and the houses are same age. Kind of. Sometimes you'll compare, compare um, Ventana to Liberty Point. So that's, then you're starting to get a little more advanced. So if you have those come up, you probably need a little bit of help to make sure you're not, because sometimes I'll see CMAs from other agents and you know they're pulling Liberty Point into acreage, not the same thing. Or they're pulling Pueblo West East into acreage, not the same thing. So it's gonna skew your numbers. So it's important to know your sub areas and the easiest way to start learning that is just when you start looking at listings see what their sub area is and then you kind of know like around central high school is central you know university is university park you know walking stick is by the golf course so the more you start studying that the <laughs> better you'll know the areas Okay. And I know your example is in town. <clears throat> if you have one with an acreage, at what point do you start to um, refine your filter? Give me an it's example. Um, <clears throat> like 40 acres? Like out in the county. If it's, yeah, if it's two acres or three acres. Or I don't initially. <laughs> so what I do is I want to pull all my comps because sometimes in the Mesa I can't find the acreage I'm looking for. And what I'll do is I'll adjust for the acreage. Separately mm -hmm. on that CMA. Yeah. Okay. Unless it's big acreage. <coughs> if if yeah. we're talking 40 mm -hmm. acres, I'm going to pull up everywhere yeah. and just kind of start refining from there. Because then if I can find, you know, 10 in Hatchet Ranch and that's where I'm at, then I'll take those 10 and filter them. So I think the key is to start with this information and just kind of, because then what you do is you really see what the marketplace is doing oh, when you start fine tuning it. Thank you. Yeah. 
places like Rye and Colorado City, you only use those areas. But so if you don't like, I have I'm listing a four level. <laughs> There's just not that many four level mm -hmm. comps at this. So then when I change, the you would go to a tri level. A tri level. Mm -hmm. A bi level and just kind of work out that. Yeah, one, so I, I would start with a tri level. Okay. I don't think of personally to me and me and some appraisers have had conversations. Is a bi level's not. It's a different buyer. And what I always tell appraisers when I'm talking to, to them about value, because sometimes they'll give me a two-story compared to my rancher, it's not the same buyer. Because right. I could tell you I would never buy a two-story house. I would buy a ranch-style house. And most people that are looking at ranches, agreeable, mm -hmm. they don't want a two-story house unless they're young. So sometimes mm -hmm. the appraiser will throw you know a two-story in there and you're like, well, there was 10 other ranch style houses, why did we use a two story? And you should ask them, I always ask them. Maybe they had a better, sometimes it's because they need something that costs less than your rancher, because they need to, you need to bracket one that's less than your listing and one that's more than your listing price. And so when they're doing an appraisal, they're trying to do the same thing, they're bracketing your, your subject property. Does that help? So, when, Vicki, are you looking now? Uh -huh. So is this house similar? And when I say similar, the finishes, the flooring? Um, hers needs updating, so this is more updated. Okay. Definitely. So then I would take it out. Okay. Then I would go to the next one. And I would say, is this similar? It looks like this one's updated too. So mm -hmm. I would take it out. Then I go to these photos. And when we start getting close to what it looks like, then Vicki's gonna say, yes, that's more similar. So this is not. Do you see why I want you to go look at the house? Mm -hmm. Because you could tell them their house is worth 156,000 and it's not. So this one's a little older. It has original hardwood floors. And so, so God bless you. So you'll look at these. It has the older, probably single pane windows. So when you're looking, that's what I'm looking for. Is this the older doors? It hasn't been flipped. It has, this looks like um, they painted over wallpaper. Is what that looks like. And here's why I tell you that. Because somebody's gonna walk in and say this has foundation issues. And I'm gonna say no, they painted over the wallpaper and all the seams are starting to peel back because they don't know, so you should. Now, if I see a huge crack up here or I see a huge crack off of a window, uh, then we may have some settlement. And the thing is, you're not a foundation expert, but you do know if they're settling because you can usually see it and it's usually you see it around your doors the, you'll get these big long cracks or around your windows. Every house settles, so don't make a huge ordeal of it because it may not have a true foundation issue, but you could always get an engineer to take a look at it. Every house settles, period. And some settle more than others, depends on like when they were built and compaction and things like that in the soils. So don't freak out your people. And then it has a little smaller kitchen with the the older. And that uh, looks more similar. Same kind of cabinets. Um, yeah, they're old. Perfect. But okay. It doesn't have any of that nice wood trim around the windows, though. That is. Yeah. Okay. Something. So. So what I would do is she's saying, okay, yeah, that's pretty close to what I got. So we know that's our start, right? We know now we're in some properties that look similar to our subject. So now we're gonna go to the next one. This one looks like it has new carpet. The bathroom, these are painted. These are not newer cabinets. Most likely they're painted. Yeah, it looks like the bathroom. Okay. And then this one has a tile surround. Does yours have a tile surround? Yeah. Okay, but just keep it in mind. We're not gonna throw it away, but we wanna say it has a tile surround. Why is tile important? Because it's a 
hard surface and it has more value? Right. So Jay said it's a hard surface so it has more value. So the difference is you've seen the plastic inserts. Yeah. Those are cheaper. This is a, a custom tile. See how they did the herringbone in the center? So this is, this is custom tile. So it doesn't mean we're going to kick this one out because it is similar, but we're going to, in our mind, in adjustments, we're going to say, this one has a little bit better features than our property, okay? And it looks like, so these are for mica, and sometimes it's hard to tell, but you can, the more you see, the more you'll be able to tell. But this is a for mica backing, and these look like new cabinets in this listing. So this one has had some upgrades, but yet yeah, it's priced lower than our last one. So, so I'm still gonna keep it, and then we might throw it out at the end, okay? So now we're gonna go to our next one. This is why it takes two hours to do these. So then we're looking at that. So it's the same, probably kind of windows, has hardwood floors. Does yours have hardwood floors? She put the carpet in there. That's, she did put the carpet in about two years ago. Is it hardwood underneath? Do you know? I don't know. So the easiest way to check is to pull out a vent, a floor vent, and look under the <coughs> carpet. And you'll if it's real hardwood, you're gonna see. It's not OSB, so it doesn't look like particle boards. It, you're gonna see a big piece of wood underneath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one is probably similar. It's an older style. It looks like it has newer carpet. No and Vicky, it's painted. And then this one has a tile surround and a one card detach, but it's an overhead. So you understand what she said, it's this, not an overhead. So I'm gonna keep it too. So now that I have some on the top side, I'm gonna go to the bottom side because I want to get rid of them, and then we're going to smash it down again. So this one's a flip. So these are original hardwoods. And if you don't know the difference between laminate and hardwood, you should go to Lowe's or Home Depot and start looking at the different products because real hard wood is a hard surface and it's worth more money than a wood laminate. So this is cute. So I'm gonna keep it. It's completely remodeled, but it's the lowest priced one on our, I think it is. What's the price on that? I can't see that. 90, 98.5 and it sold for 99. So then I'm going to go to our next listing. Here's, a, here's another pet peeve I have. <laughs> is I don't want to see the outside of this house for the first 10 pictures. Give me a front shot, give me some interiors, and then start going outside, right? Because that's how people look for property. They don't care about a back patio in the third picture because they don't even know if they like the house. And if you see mine that way, send me an email because I don't put mine in. So it's older. Why do you laugh? <laughs> Quality control. That's right. <laughs> but you don't know until you know. Right? So that's why if I call you and I tell you something, it's because I don't want the MLS committee to call you and tell you they're going to fine you or they send you a nasty gram. Um, I'm doing it because I want you to learn and it's better to pick up the phone and tell somebody, hey, you, you have this in the wrong area or sub area. They're click boxes. They're easy. It's easy to do that while you're busy. So this one has the older cabinets. It looks like the original, like a laminate, and then it has this maybe tile. Looks like tile. It has nice paint. Ooh, like that bedspread. Okay. <laughs> one day we're gonna have one on photos too, so we're gonna have a class on <laughs> photography. Ooh, last bit black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least it's 
Yeah, at least the toilet seats down. So we're going to keep it too. So it, we're getting more and more properties that are similar to our subject. This is a flip. This is a wood laminate. The original cabinets. So it's been painted and it has new flooring. Looks like it has new fixtures. Do you see what I'm trying to look at? Because then it tells me if these are inferior or superior to my subject, when I get to the final number, I'm gonna know where would I price it? Am I on the nicer, higher end, or am I on the lower end, or am I kind of right in between both? I think sometimes when uh, the pictures are deceiving, mm -hmm. and you go in and you think, man, they photoshopped this. Because they look so weird. Yeah. That's a pet peeve of mine, just I saying. Know. Wide angle square, square rooms so you know you love my photos, yeah. So, and it is, and this is for, so here's what I tell people. When they tell me, oh no, my house is worth 200000 and you priced it at one sixty, I say, okay, here's all of the addresses. Go look at the photos online. Because I want them to see every photo looks just like their house. And then I say, okay, now let's go to 200000 it does not look like their house because pictures, even though they may not be totally accurate, they're still good enough to say you're either similar or you're not. If you got granite and they have Formica from 1970, not the same, okay? So then now we're kind of getting into where they all look fam like similar is what I would say. Does yours have a, is it drywall or is it um, these seats? It's drywall. I know that uh, these tiles. she's got some stuff to do to it. Uh, one hallway, they literally just pulled paneling off. Okay. So they're going to do the drywall in the hallway. So this is not similar, but yet it's priced higher. So I'm going to throw it out. Is that the last one, though? That was his one, right? See. Yes. Is it this one? No, it's the one on Bragdon. Bragdon. <laughs> so we're going to take it out. So this has like the original. Oof. See all these garages? So we'd have to make an adjustment for that. But it also has 1970s carpet, 1970s cabinets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep it, and I know that sounds kind of crazy. It's because she, um, again, it's not updated. Mm -hmm. So so let's keep it. Just to me compares. Okay, so we're going to keep it. So I'm going to filter right now to see where I'm at. So I'm at 10. I want to get rid of four more. So I'm going to go to the higher point price points again because I don't want it to skew our numbers. That's a higher one. Why did this house sell? Garages. Big wallet too. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, okay, well, we're, once we adjust for these garages, it's gonna drop the price by, this will probably be $8,000, $9,000 adjustment. So you wanna you want to take that into consideration is like what really drove that buyer to purchase this, right? And usually for men it's garages, for women it's kitchens. Great. So this one is superior to ours. So we're going to take it out. That's pretty shiny. Does that look like granite or formica? No, it was granite. Okay. Usually, too, granite always have, most of the time has it under mount sink. Mm -hmm. So when you look at them, most of the time they're under mounted. Very rarely do you, well, what, maybe two out of ten will have a, over. it'll lip it. Because mm -hmm. when people get granite, they like those under, because then you don't have all that. Right. to clean. Okay, 
and then we said this is a go. So now looking at these, Vicki, do you still think these are closer or further from your subject? That one was a good one. That one, again, no hard one that I know of. I okay, so keep it. But the, but the older cabinetry. Is okay. And then this one? I would say yes. Well, no tile. No, yeah. Remodeled? These That's are all newer. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to take it out. Do you see what I'm doing now? Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, what do we look? So let's get down to a few of them, and then let's get real with what we got. So these Similar. are... Similar. And this one has a tile surround, so we'll, we'll keep that one. Older. This is similar? Yes. So this has either hot, hot water heat or electric heat. Big difference to your buyer. <laughs> so if you have electric heat, the cost is going to be expensive, so you want to make sure that you get utilities for that buyer. If it's all electric house, they are very expensive. So this one doesn't have a lot of great photos, so I'm going to say we're similar. All right. Yeah. So this one has the same kind of garage, and this one is the flip one. I'm going to take it out 